in light of the fact that we don't have any answers despite all the reams of material they've given us i it's almost like that that is a talking point let's flood them with paperwork and never really give them what they're looking for and then oh when you ask for it what do we get oh yeah i i forgot we we get conspiracy theories charges we now welcome our good friend he is author of obama's enforcer eric holder's justice department former member of the department of justice civil rights division he is manager of election reform at heritage action and heritage foundation's senior legal analyst hans von spakowski welcome hans Hey, Crane. How are you doing? I'm good. I wanted to just bring everybody up to speed. On Friday, this was one of the exchanges that took place in the hearing of the commissioner, Costigan, and Representative Dave Camp. Roll it. Your letter describes the Lois Lerner emails as being unrecoverable. Correct. But fails to mention where the damaged hard drive is today. Do you know where the actual hard drive is that crashed in 2011? Yeah. <clears throat> I'm advised the actual hard drive, after it was determined that it was dysfunctional and that with experts no emails could be retrieved, was recycled and destroyed in the normal process. This was. So was it physically destroyed? Uh, that's my understanding. So was it melted down? Do you know? I have no idea what the recycler does with it. This was three years ago. Do you believe that this was intentionally destroyed, the hard drives of not only Lois Lerner but six others? You know, I, I can't say that, but it, it all seems highly suspicious. I mean, look, uh, we know now that Lois Lerner's hard drive crashed 10 days after uh, Dave Camp, chairman of the House Ways and Means Committee, sent one of the first letters over saying conservative groups, and now we have uh, six others key employees whose, whose hard drives crashed, and we now find out that um, uh, the, the company they were with uh, for backup got canceled right after that. So you, you have Camp's letter, the request and understanding of what they're looking for, and then you have these events that are the probability of them happening and not being able to be recovered. But Hans, and we talked about this last week, but I do want to refresh. There is a way, because these emails were sent to someone, so they must have a record of that, unless they were sent within the six people of the range. But even then, they have a server that they're downloaded onto, which the commissioner testified to earlier. So... There is a way to get these things, isn't there? There are fingerprints in the digital world, I would think. Well, except they're saying that uh, for these six people and for Lois Lerner, mm -hmm. uh, there are no backup tapes of all of their emails because uh, the IRS says they were recycling the emails every six weeks plus um, two months after Lois Lerner's email crashed. Uh, the IRS canceled its contract with Sonosoft. Sonosoft is this company that works with Microsoft to archive emails. Uh, they had had a contract with the IRS for six years, and all of a sudden uh, the IRS cancels their contract. And, by the way, it was just a couple of months after that that the emails of these other folks supposedly crashed. Okay, but by law, aren't they supposed to keep the – the archive backup, if it's not through Sonastar, it's through some other company? I mean, they're, they're... The answer is yes, Crane. Okay. There okay. are federal records laws that apply. And the head of the IRS said something really bizarre in his last hearing. He made this claim that emails are not records. Well, that's, that's one of the most foolish things I've ever heard. Uh, any federal employee can tell you emails, of course, are records, and they do have to be preserved. But, you know, the IRS, with its typical arrogance, was saying, no, we didn't need to preserve these records. 
What are you looking for tonight out of the hearing? If you were to look at outcomes, which I know you do because you're a leader, and you say, here's the outcome I'm looking for, what are you looking for? Well, I want, to, I want the IRS to explain, uh, first of all, why in the world did they cancel a contract with this outside company that was archiving all of their emails? And second, uh, why didn't they call in the FBI and its computer forensic specialists to see if they could recover the emails off of the hard drive? We, we've heard absolutely nothing from the Department of Justice about any of this, who supposedly is conducting a criminal investigation. Could they say they're conducting a criminal investigation and they cannot speak to it because it's ongoing? Well, they haven't really said a word. This, this was announced that the, the DOJ was opening up an investigation in May of last year, but you'll notice that the IRS hasn't said a word in the past two weeks about the FBI in any way being involved in trying to help them recover any of these emails. And that tells you that DOJ is not conducting a serious investigation. With this, in light of your book, Obama's Enforcer, Eric Holder's Justice Department, would this fit a pattern of the Department of Justice under Eric Holder? Uh, oh, yeah. It, it absolutely fits the pattern. Um, uh, Politics and ideology drives the enforcement now at the Justice Department, not, not the objective and fair and impartial um, interests of, of justice. And uh, there's no way that he's going to allow a criminal investigation to go forward that would in any way uh, indict high-level officials that might embarrass the administration. You know, he considers himself part of the president's team. That's more important to him than being the, the attorney general. Last week you mentioned cutting off travel funds for the Attorney General. First off, you can correct me if I'm wrong on that. Secondly, if so, is there anything else that can be done when you do have an Attorney General that is acting as a heat shield or as a partisan, certainly, not fulfilling his responsibilities, but rather looking at his job as political? It, is there some form, because we talk about this a lot, Hans, of accountability that we can expect and that specific types of action of Congress would deliver? That's very difficult. You know, the way the Constitution was written, it expected um, good behavior by uh, members of an administration. And when it comes to, for example, the attorney general, if he's misbehaving, uh, look, uh, Congress, the only thing they can do is they can either try to um, use the power of the purse over him, like I said, with targeted budget cuts, things like that, or they can impeach him. But as you know, I mean, impeachment, that, that's just not going to, that's just not going to happen. Okay. So again, we come back to this place where we don't really have the law being enforced, no accountability. I guess that comes into line where the political pressure gets so great. And is that why we're seeing this in prime time to go after the low-information voters who may not be aware of this and to send a signal to the networks, yeah, this is a big deal, even if it's not really helping your particular agenda or ideology or the president that holds it. Yeah, public pressure is very important. Um, I'll give you a quick example of that. Yeah, you all may recall that um, not too long ago, Holder's Justice Department sued the state of Louisiana claiming that the school voucher program down there, which is for poor kids, it, it gets them out of failing schools. It, it, nine, of, nine out of ten of the kids who use it are African-American. And, and the whole Justice Department went to court claiming this was a racially discriminatory program. And the only reason they backed off from what they were originally trying to do, trying to stop the program, is because of public outcries about what they were doing, including critical editorials, even in liberal newspapers like the Washington Post. So public pressure can sometimes work, and that's, that's one of the only other alternatives you have for trying to get, to get the Attorney General to do what he's supposed to do. In light of Fast and Furious and the other scandals that we have seen, IRS, the James Rosen, the, the, the well, we can go down the line, but in light of those, part of your mission has been to inform people about what is taking place. And oftentimes you are ahead of the game. You do it in the book 
Obama's enforcer, Eric Holder's Justice Department, but you also do it in light of what we're seeing on the border and the crisis, humanitarian crisis. You addressed this back when we talked about a hearing, or excuse me, a judge who can, went after the DHS for not doing its job and the consequences of that. Federal judge, the Obama administration, is entitled AIDS and Abets Human Trafficking, December 20th, 2013. You were way ahead of this, Hans. Well, I, I, you know, it wasn't me. It was that federal judge yeah, in, but in you, a case yeah. saying mm -hmm. this is what the administration's doing, and he was extremely critical of them, saying it was dangerous and endangered these children, and everything that he said would come to pass, that is exactly what has happened. I mean, with this crisis on the border is because uh, all these people are reading their newspapers and their home countries, and they're hearing, if we can get across the border, we will get amnesty. So let's go. And despite the visit from our vice president saying they won't get amnesty, they really don't believe that. They seem to understand the political system and our recent history of executive action. Yes, they understand that. The, the, Biden may say that, but we, you know, actions speak louder than words, and their yeah. actions have been to not enforce the immigration laws for the past uh, few years and to basically allow people who, once they re are here, to stay and to not uh, put them into removal proceedings. Hey, I'm going to try out for CNN or MSNBC real quick. Here's my question. So when will Governor Walker finally get caught in his behavior of politicizing the campaigning process and, and funneling money where, to where it should not be going? Hans? Yeah, that was pretty good. Uh, you're, you're being facetious here, uh, yes. here Crane. Uh, <laughs> yes. what, you're, what you're talking about for your listeners is that uh, the news media has been full of these allegations the last couple of days that, that Governor Walker of, of Wisconsin was somehow engaging in a criminal scheme to break Wisconsin campaign finance laws. That is completely untrue. Mm -hmm. Those are claims that were made by local Democratic prosecutors in a secret investigation uh, their case was thrown out, thrown out by a federal judge who said there was absolutely no basis for the claims that they were making. Hans von Spakovsky, Obama's enforcer. I'm sure it's climbing up the charts. Are we going to see the bestseller list here, Hans? <laughs> I think even if it, uh, if it had bestseller sales, the New York Times would probably ban it from their list. That's for sure. So we'll try to make that happen because we all need the truth. And you deliver it and you communicate it as you just did, as you saw in the final story we covered, explaining it and understanding what the truth is. And that's what Hans von Spakovsky has and continues to do. Obama's enforcer, Eric Holder's Justice Department. Check it out. Also check out his work, Heritage Foundation, senior legal analyst and election reform manager, manager of election reform at Heritage Action, Hans von Spakovsky. Thanks, buddy. Great Thank to be you, with Craig. you.